Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, we're going to continue learning about deep reinforcement learning, and we're going to see how to apply a TF agents based program to Atari. We're going to look at how to play the Pong game. However, the same technique can be used for just about any Atari game. And then in the next part, we're going to look at something that's not a game and see how we can apply deep reinforcement learning to a financial simulation. To see all my videos about Kaggle, neural networks, and other AI topics, click the subscribe button and the bell next to it and select all to be notified of every new video. So let's look at one of the most common uses for things like deep reinforcement learning, at least the examples that most people get into, even if they don't get into actually applying this to problems of their own, and that's Atari games. Now in the next module, I'm going to show you how to actually adapt this to a problem of your own design and we'll will create something in reinforcement learning that is not OpenAI Gen. But for now, let's do the obligatory Atari example. Now, I had to build most of this sort of from scratch. There is not a lot of TF agent examples of Atari games out there. So I, I worked on this a fair amount to get it working. I'm gonna open this in Google Colab because I would like to use a GPU. This will be deadly, deadly slow if you don't use a GPU. Now what I'm going to suggest is go ahead and do a run all because there's a lot of, of code in here and you'll run into an error. Hopefully they fix this by the time you're watching this video, but at the time you would get an error basically as you would you would run through this part here where you install all of the necessary software. And I'll update this as as things change, because things constantly change with machine learning. And then as soon as you went down to here and tried to do all these imports, you would get an error. If you're getting an error in this import block, do a runtime, restart, and then run all again. Restarting the runtime does not erase the installation that happened up here. Basically, the reason you get that error is because once you've pip installed TF agents, it updates the version of protocol buffer that is installed on your computer and TensorFlow itself needs a restart of the Python environment or it's gonna give you an error at that point. Hopefully, as time progresses, Google Colab, I'm really hoping they will install TF agents just out of the box. I assume they will. It's a Google product. It's just a new product, relatively new. So let's talk about how we will do this. We're going to still use a DQN, a deep Q learning network. This is all based on Virtual Atari, which is a completely unrelated project to machine learning. It was just a emulator so that you could play old Atari 2600 games. Now, I am somewhat old, but this is before really even my time. There are 2600s, this is called the Atari 2600, out there when I was pretty young. But this was kind of the older game system out there. I did play Pac-Man on this back in the day, which was which was kind of fun. I was more into a system that came out around this time called Intellivision, a little bit later than the Atari 2600. And then of course my absolute true love, the Commodore 64. So this is the specs for an Atari 2600. It's not an advanced machine by any stretch. Your play field resolution is 40 by 192 pixels. Now they do some creative coding to sort of stretch that out, but you're able to basically just feed that right into a convolution neural network. Also, the amount of memory in an Atari is not huge, so it's measured in kilobytes, not, not megabytes. Actually, I think it's less than a kilobyte. So you can push the active memory that the games are running on into the con... Well, the video you would push into a convolution neural network, the, the 160 by 192, that's the resolution I think you're normally dealing with. But the, you can actually look at the in-state memory of the game and use that for the state space. And there's a lot of information in there and that can be used. You, the agent can learn to cheat too because some of the memory might be being utilized for the opponent play. So the computer controlled the NPCs in the game. So we do all the imports. 
Hyperparameters. I tuned this a lot to get it to work for Pong. I also did some with Breakout and Space Invaders. Uh, you've got to you've got to play with these values and get them working for whatever game you're going to do. The number of iterations that is I'm doing nearly a quarter of a million of them here. So that is. I typically ran this thing all night. It, it takes a while to train, even with a GPU. And I'm also doing 10 collection steps per iteration. Replay buffer size, that didn't make too much of a difference. But this learning rate, this 10 value here, and the number of iterations, those are the guys that I was really tuning to try to get better results. I did not mess with the shape of the neural network. That could also help you as well. This stuff does take a lot of time, and not just your time, compute time to try out your different hyperparameter tunings. So for an Atari environment, we're using Pong. You can see some of the other games I was playing with here as well. Pong's relatively simple. It is basically two paddles bouncing a ball between themselves. Now Pong was before my time. I, I never really got into Pong whatsoever. That would probably be, I mean, that would be the 1970s, which was a little before I got into, into video games. Mid 80s is kind of when I got into a lot of this stuff. So the frame skip rate, you're not going to look at every single frame that is coming through in the Atari. This is just things to make the computation time reasonable. If you are processing every single frame, that's going to that's going to take a lot of processing time. There is a wrapper that TF Agents gives you to load the Atari games. I definitely recommend you do this because it builds in some of the pre-processing that is necessary or not necessary, but it really helps your neural network be able to learn quickly because the idea is I mean, look at Pong. Is the color information really telling you all that much? And this is the little paddle that's going to go up and down. The computer, the NPC, the computer controlled player. By the way, NPC is non-player character. I guess I get that from the, the MMOGs, the Moogs. This is the opponent's score. This is your score. And technically, the neural network is looking at everything. I don't know that it's getting a whole lot from the scores, but that is potentially something that it uses as well. Maybe it tries harder when it sees it's losing. I don't know. I'm kidding. It probably doesn't. It probably learns that those scores are pretty, pretty unimportant. So we load the Atari environment. We are using a separate one for training and evaluation, just so that if you run an eval step in there that you're not changing the state of the training, which could be confusing. That would be... Oh, that would be like having an, an alcohol blackout almost. You Time would skip forward, but you would not know what happened. Probably a bad example of what's going on there, but it works for me as a visual. Now the agent, this I got from TF agent's example. This is just a, a wrapper around the normal agent. You can see that we're dividing each of the state values but by 255. What you're doing there basically is converting that 0 to 255 RGB values into a floating point value between 0 and 1. And the neural network deals with that a little bit better. Most of the examples have done that. I, I usually do that when I'm dealing with image data. Don't feed 0 to 255 into a convolution neural network. It can deal with it okay, but it really likes those smaller values better. This information here is important. This, These are actually hyperparameters. I did not try tuning these too much. I just took example values. But here, these are the fully connected layers. So these are the dense layers. Most convolution neural networks have dense layers at the very, very end. So we have just a single layer of 512. You could add multiple ones there if you want. And then the convolution layers, this is the channel count, 32, uh, it's scanning an 8 by 8 with a stride of 4. That's basic convolution information and then several of these. They don't really provide a way to put a max pooling layer in there, at least that I've seen, but this has worked relatively well. I did not try tuning this too, too much, or at all really. 
Then you build up the Atari Q network that we had up there. So this is the wrapper for the neural network. And I have more text that describes kind of what I did because this, this example I did literally, literally build from scratch, except for that Q network wrapper that I found. We're gonna use an RMS prop optimizer. The learning rate and other things here are very important. Those are hyperparameters that you'll want to tune. We use a global step so that we have the a counter for how far we've gone with training. And here's where we create the DQN agent. DQN is good when you have Boolean action space or discrete action space where it has individual values and not some continuous range of numbers. In the next part, the next video, we will see how to deal with a continuous range action space. You use a close, a close relative to the DQN neural network. I use the same evaluation that I got from TF agents. This is this is a method that I copied, a function that I copied. Basically what it's doing is 10 evaluation steps and it calculates the average reward over 10 steps. Atari games are stochastic. They have random numbers. The same strategy won't necessarily work for two games in a row, but they figure if you played it over 10 games, that's, that's gonna be reasonable. Replay buffer, we're using pretty much the same type of replay buffer that I've used in the other 10 flow TF agent examples. There's nothing too crazy that you need to do here for Atari. I use exactly the same random collection code that I've used in a couple of examples so far. And this is code that I got from the TF agents examples works quite well for that. This is exactly the same training the agent code that I used in previous examples. Nothing needs to really change here. It's pretty boilerplate. Some initial setup and then we're going to loop through the number of iterations and we're going to see this is where that steps per iteration. So setting this to 10, each iteration we're going to collect 10 steps and use that to train the neural network to build to the data that we randomly sample from that we're training the data, the data collection. Here you can see it is it is working very hard training. Now negative 20, negative 21, I think it actually is, is the worst you can possibly do. If you're just, if you're doing bad at Pong, everything, you're not hitting anything, you're shooting like stormtroopers, you're sending, you're you're not hit, you're not sending it through the, the other guy, he's sending it right back to you. Uh, so I was very depressed with that when I was learning and working through this. No matter what I would try, I would get like negative 21 straight down, down, down. It'd be four hours later, negative 21. But as I started to adjust things, I was able to get this to improve considerably. And you can see this, this is a decent training run. I'm fairly happy with it. It got above zero. Now you can do much better than this. This is a pretty average run that I have here. And I'll show you what, what mine looks like. It does score points. It does much better than the random agent, but you could definitely refine this if you wanted to spend a lot of time optimizing those hyperparameters and throwing compute at it. Visualization, you can see pretty pretty good progression upward. Probably more iterations would help me. And then you can see the video here. I'm gonna let it play. It's good, but not great. Oh, I scored a, scored one, scored two. I'm ahead, even, I'm behind. So it, it's, it's playing acceptably well. I never really got too much into Pong to play this on my own, so I don't know how, how good I would particularly be doing here. But it's it's definitely losing overall. But if you try the random agent, oh it's it's catching up. This is awesome. Am I am I ahead? Yes! So this is it's it's definitely got some skill. It has definitely learned some things from uh, from this game and is is now ahead. So I'm not gonna look at the whole three minutes that I captured. Who knows? Maybe it maybe it really really gets better. But let's look at the random agent and you'll see that the reinforcement learning that I took some time optimizing really does make a difference. I mean it's getting killed. It scored one. I mean a broke clock is right twice a day, right? So that's that's it playing. It's it doesn't take nearly as many minutes that's a good example right there like how how long does it stay playing before you hit end of game I mean like when I when I would go to arcades back in the 80s how long would my two dollars worth of quarters last that my mom had given me in in my case usually about five minutes I was it's not that good at video games ever I really like centipede that was probably my favorite dragon's layer was probably the worst you had to spend I think an entire dollar and I would get killed in like a minute Thank you for watching my video, and in the next one, we're going to look at how to do the same sort of thing, only with a financial simulation. If you find this kind of thing interesting, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.